Maggas MVP. MTG, Maggas MVP. MTG, Maggas MVP. She's a boss. She don't rock with trans Tifa cause they soft. Them liberal tears can't save you, wipe them off. You know we reppin' 45, he never lost. That monstrosity was a clip from the music video MTG by MAGA rapper for Giato Blow. And the goal of said video was to supposedly promote Marjorie Taylor Greene's anti-trans legislation called Protect Children's Innocence Act, which would criminalize gender affirming care for minors nationwide. And on Twitter, she tweeted about the video saying, I never thought I'd be featured in a rap video. But then again, I never thought the left would be grooming our children. She is so fucking stupid. But regardless, the lyrics to the song don't really even talk about the bill or mention trans people in general aside from the reference to trans tifa but with regards to grooming i mean there are sound bites at the beginning of her calling democrats pedophiles spliced in so i mean i guess it technically counts it feels like she just was in a music video and just doing that as a lawmaker feels pretty cringe right so to me this is her way of saying hey Hello, fellow kids. I like rap music, too. Do you like rap music? Well, you're going to love this song about my legislation, which isn't really actually about my legislation, but to justify this cringeworthy thing that I did. Well, it's about this bill. There's some broader cause, if you will. But before I show you how people reacted to it, let's watch another short clip. MTG, Megas MVP. Democrats get back. Boom. Reporters even get slapped. They're spreading all these rumors because Marjorie be spitting big facts. Deep state in the left, always hating. Always hate. When they gonna let Joe up out that basement? Marjorie, I really love what you do. Keep calling Ronald's out. No one does it better than you, huh? Marjorie, I really love what you do. <laughs> It is so fucking bad. Holy shit. Listen, I don't want to discourage people if they have a dream and they want to follow it. But in the instance of Forgiato Blow, my brother in Christ, you have to stop following your dreams. You just, you, you don't have it. You don't have it, man. You just, you don't got it. Some people have it. Some people don't. You don't have it. Stop, please. Now, listen, I think that the word cringe is used way too much on the internet. But the moment where she was standing there awkwardly nodding, like this moment where she's like, and she doesn't really know if she's supposed to be dancing. Um, that moment right there in particular genuinely made my skin crawl. I don't know what it was about that moment, but you could just tell how awkward and uncomfortable she was. And she wasn't sure what to do because she's never been in a music video before. I feel like it's very charitable to call it a music video, but she's never been in that predicament before where somebody is trying to perform and she just sits there awkwardly and reacts. That moment, oof, that was very, very cringeworthy to me. Um, actual cringe. Now, the reaction to that video uh, was mostly negative, with nearly double the amount of dislikes as likes. And he even got ratioed in his own comment section, which is very brutal. So in the pinned comment, he says, let's make the liberals cry. Get MTG on iTunes now. And I don't even know who's still buying songs on iTunes in 2023. But regardless, somebody responded saying no one is crying we're just laughing at you and another person replied saying more like fellatio blow <laughs> childish but funny and effective uh, and as you can see both of those comments got more likes than his comments but i mean the rest of the comment section was arguably more ruthless so this person says there's nothing less hip-hop than mtg any song about her should be over a banjo track. You make Riff Raff sound like Tupac. Straight fire, man. Like a dumpster filled with gasoline. And probably my favorite. Damn, bro, you got a hidden talent. Let's make sure to keep it hidden. And that's just a small sample, but still, the response overall was very negative. Which begs the question, how did this talentless hack achieve any level of notoriety given just how bad and cringeworthy his music is? Well, I mean, there's a couple of reasons. Um, first and foremost, money. With money, you can make magic happen. So his grandfather, Stuart Arnold, founded the magazine Auto Trader, which means that this individual, his grandson, has a lot of wealth passed down to him. And with that wealth, you can promote yourself. You can tour the country and you can get your name out there, even if you don't have talent. You can try to find some sort of a niche for yourself, carve it out, and have a relative level of success. Now, 
as Chuds of TikTok points out, he has a Trump tattoo on his leg with the words self-made on Trump's face. I guess it's Trump with the face tattoo. And that tattoo and that saying is incredibly ironic considering the fact that both him and Trump are Nepo babies. But still, I think that this man proves that we don't really live in a meritocracy because if you can, if you have money, you can make anything happen. But to be fair to him, he did have some viral success with his true claim to fame being his boycott Target song that he released in response to right-wing outrage to Target's 2023 Pride collection, uh, which did have a much more positive response. I mean, there were a lot of haters, but the response overall was much more positive, namely due to conservatives discovering his music. And I think that this comment really says it all here. Quote, I thought it was a meme, but the amount of, quote, I don't usually listen to rap, but in this comment section is wild. So in other words, even the dipshit MAGA rapper knows that you can propel yourself to at least a relative level of fame among conservatives by simply pandering to them, regardless of how brazen you are. Even if it feels patronizing with how much you're pandering to them, they're not going to acknowledge that you're insulting their intelligence. And even if they don't like your fucking music, they're still going to listen to you if you tell them what they want to hear. So that's kind of the lesson. But we've kind of gone off on a little bit of a tangent because I do want to recenter the conversation back to Marjorie Taylor Greene because I think that this music video further demonstrates how clueless and out of touch she is. So first of all, if this really is an attempt to promote her legislation, then, I mean, I feel like this goes without saying, right? You don't do that by doing a fucking music video. You promote your legislation by bargaining with your colleagues in Congress not MAGA rappers. You cultivate support for it at the grassroots level. You speak to your constituents about this, tour the country to promote it. But I mean, since there's no real support for this draconian crackdown on trans existence, she is using that bill, knowing it's not going to pass, to basically pander to the GOP's base in the same way that Forgiato Blow is pandering to the GOP's base, just telling them what they want to hear, hitting them with a bunch of buzzwords, and making it seem like, you know, She's the MVP on the team, MAGA's MVP, if you will. Uh, and the reason why Republican politicians like her have to focus so much on hate mongering and trans people and LGBTQ plus rights and immigrants and uh, anti-white racism and dumb shit like that is because that's just the easy politics, right? It requires no knowledge of anything. Actually formulating solutions to problems that your constituents face is a much more difficult task. It requires a little bit of intelligence that she lacks. And I want to show you really what I mean by that, right? Why these MAGA conservatives, the far right, are so bad at what they do. So she gave a speech over the weekend at the Turning Point Action Conference. And in one portion of her speech, if you didn't have the context, if you just had the text in front of you and you didn't know who said it, you would think that this was a promotion of Joe Biden. But here, this is coming from Marjorie Taylor Greene, and this is her attacking Joe Biden. Let's listen. Lyndon B. Johnson is very similar to Joe Biden. How are they the same? They're both Democrat socialists. Lyndon B. Johnson was the majority leader in the Senate. Does that sound familiar? He was vice president to Kennedy. Joe was vice president to Obama. He was appointed as the president after JFK was assassinated, then he was elected. His big socialist programs were the Great Society. The Great Society were big government programs to address education, medical care, urban problems, rural poverty, transportation, Medicare, Medicaid, food stamps, and welfare the Office of Economic Opportunity, and big labor and labor unions. Now, LBJ had the Great Society, but Joe Biden had Build Back Better, and he still is working on it. The largest public investment in social infrastructure and environmental programs that is actually finishing what FDR started, that LBJ expanded on, and Joe Biden is attempting to complete. Socialism. I mean, she makes it seem like Joe Biden is the second coming of FDR. And even though I wish that were true, it's simply not. I wish he was a socialist. I wish he actually cared even a little bit about health care, but he doesn't. But she says he cares about health care and labor unions and poverty and infrastructure as if that's a bad thing. 
She is so out of touch that she thinks that that is going to turn people off to Joe Biden when in actuality she is effectively campaigning for him. And the White House acknowledged this and capitalized on it by tweeting out, caught us, President Joe Biden is working to make life easier for hardworking families. Yeah. So uh, I'm sure that they appreciate the free advertising, Marjorie Taylor Greene, but it's not quite the burn that you think it is to say that the president is trying to improve the lives of working people. Again, I wish that that were true. I wish he didn't break up the railroad strike. I wish that he actually did care and wasn't just doing not even the bare minimum, but just a little bit to help us. But the fact is that Joe Biden is not good enough. But yet she's like, oh, no, no, no. He's trying to finish what FDR started. FDR was elected so many times that we instituted term limits. Okay, he died in office because he was so popular. They are so stupid and so out of touch. But that's a good thing, right? Even though these are very dark times and we see very Orwellian and draconian bills being proposed, we have the advantage in the sense that our political opponents are deeply unserious political hacks. And that's a good thing, right? They might be really good at throwing red meat to the GOP's hateful base, but at the end of the day, they're not very effective at accomplishing what they want to legislatively, at least at the national level. Now, it's a different story at the state level, right? Because that doesn't change the fact that even if Marjorie Taylor Greene isn't very effective as a lawmaker, well, there are still hundreds of Marjorie Taylor Greene replicants in positions of power in states across the country, and they actually are able to enact their hateful legislation. But nationally speaking, we still do have the advantage, which is something that I think shouldn't be lost on us, right? And even if that alone isn't going to save us from a fascist takeover, it at least buys us some time, which matters when the stakes are so high. So look, I'm glad that Marjorie Taylor Greene decided to star in a dipshit MAGA rapper's music video because it's not going to help her legislation, but it does at least give us the opportunity to laugh at her and demonstrate to everyone who doesn't already know what a fucking clown she is.